Abe Sapien, Drums of the Dead, a weird tale of the South Sea. It always starts with sharks. Hundreds of sharks. Maybe thousands. And then there are the drums. The steady rhythmic beating of drums that come from nowhere and everywhere all at once. As always, the men find that it does little to cover their ears, for the drums beat within their own heads. Are they drums? Some wonder, or is it the sound of their racing hearts? It's your What language is that? He's possessed just like the others. It's all right. Give me the knife. It's all right. And I'm on wood. Bureau for Paranormal Research and Defense, Fairfield, Connecticut. Yes, you have made it abundantly clear that you want Hellboy on this case. But, as I told you, he's away on assignment and is unavailable. Look, I have a shipping company to run. I need someone I can trust to take care of this thing. I'm sending you one of our best agents. You heard about that lake monster in British Columbia last year? Well, he's the man we sent on that case. I assure you that Abe Sapien is... Sapien? Is that that thing you found in a jar? Look, I'm sorry you feel that way, but if you want any help from the Bureau on this, you'll have to make do with Abe Sapien. Nice to meet you. The Bahamas. Well, nice to meet you, Mr. Sapien. This is my associate, Garrett Omata. Garrett's a psychic. This is the first time I've worked with him. He really hasn't been with the Bureau that long. They told me that he used to be a seminary student. I guess he was in some kind of accident. He was in a coma for nearly two years. When he awoke, He said that he had been to heaven and was sent back to help others find their way there. He claimed that he could see the spirits of the dead wandering the hospital, that he could feel their confusion, their pain. The doctors thought it might be brain damage. Until Garrett delivered a message to one of his physicians from that doctor's deceased father. Garrett knew things he had no way of knowing. The hospital contacted the BPRD. Garnet has been with us eight months now. Oh, there aren't any spirits here. 
This ship is clean. Clean? The captain says that these occurrences have been happening on this ship and others for years. He says that they are getting worse. But after six days at sea, we have experienced no overt paranormal activity. Garrett has been feeling increasingly disturbed since we've been at sea. He has an intense feeling of claustrophobia whenever we are below deck and a sense of intense confusion and loneliness. Feel anything? No, I'm fine right now. That reminds me, how are you feeling? Me? Oh, I'm okay as long as I take my Dramamine. Yeah, I still can't get over the fact that you, of all people, get seasick. Well, being in the water is not the same thing as being on the water. About this case, you know, we could be dealing with voodoo here. After all, this ship does travel from the Bahamas to West Africa. That would explain the speaking in tongues and spirit possessions. But if it is voodoo, why do the occurrences only happen at sea? Whoa! Are you okay, Garrett? I don't think so. They're here. The souls are here. Oh, I feel like I'm dying. Hey, they're confused. They're angry. So much sorrow. So much fear. I I'm so scared. I, I mean, they're so scared. I've got to get off the ship. <gasps> I didn't expect it to be this bad. There are so many of them. A so many lost souls. And they're praying, Abe. The souls are praying. And something's answering their prayers. <laughs> this can't be good. Try to relax, Garrett. Tell me what you're sensing. Garrett? I knew Quabadak one. Garrett, don't let this thing control you. <laughs> Watch out! Oh, I didn't want to have to hurt you, but you've left me no choice. Sorry, Garrett. <laughs> Sorry again, Garrett. Garrett, listen to me. You were sent back from heaven to help lost souls find their way, not to become a murderer. Ape? Ape? After the medic patched us up, Garrett told me that the creature that possessed him was some kind of protector spirit, like a god or something. A god, huh? Personal note, be nicer to Garrett. He also said that he kept getting an impression of a triangle. He thought we might be dealing with a Bermuda Triangle-like phenomenon. I didn't think so, but it gave me an idea. 
After a while, Garrett was able to remember more details. He said that the first spirit to possess him was that of a man who wanted to go home. He said that he felt many such souls, thousands. The second spirit, the creature, was a protector spirit. He says that he thinks it's really more than one spirit. He believes it is an amalgam created by thousands of spirits from different countries, cultures, and languages praying over hundreds of years. Something Garrett said about triangles prompted me to research the history of this shipping route. I have a hunch. Bingo. I found that this route used to be part of the triangle trade, part of the slave trade. Slaves would be captured in Africa and taken to the West Indies. There, they would be traded for sugar and molasses. The sugar and molasses were then taken to North America, where they were used to make rum. Some of the rum was then taken to West Africa and used as currency to buy slaves from unscrupulous chiefs. The first leg of this journey was known as the Middle Passage, the same route we now travel. To maximize profits, ship's captains sought to carry as many slaves as possible. This made for poor sanitary conditions. Often people were made to urinate and defecate where they lay, sometimes spending days in their own excrement. Needless to say, disease was rampant. It was not unusual for a ship to lose half her cargo before reaching port. The dead were simply tossed overboard. Conditions were so unbearable that many slaves would commit suicide. There is at least one account of a group of men who, while being exercised on deck, leapt into the shark-infested water rather than be sold into slavery. So many bodies were tossed into the ocean that it was said that the sharks followed the slave ships looking for an easy meal. It is said to this day sharks still swim that route. So they're slaves, huh? That explains all their pain. Their lives were stolen from them. Everything they knew. Why the drums before every attack, I wonder? Maybe the spirits use them to communicate their attack plans to each other. In 1791, Haitian slaves used drums to plan rebellion right under the noses of their slaveholders. I don't think it's such a good idea for you to go swimming in the water with a fresh wound. I don't know if you've heard, but sharks are attracted to blood. Pray for me. And pass me that knife, please. An interesting irony, the ship's name, Polaris, is the proper name for the North Star. The star that escaped slaves would follow to freedom. We gathered up all the bones we could and buried them on the shores of West Africa. Since then, no ship which travels the route reported any paranormal activity. 
They do, however, report a significant reduction in the number of sharks. <laughs>